Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lydia Rose and I'm in recovery from an eating disorder. And I have been for about a year now and I've not really been on my YouTube channel for the past six months, so I apologise. <laughs> uh, last time I really did any update was when I first started university and I just finished my first year. I'm now home for the holidays and I thought, you know what, I really want to get back into my YouTube channel. I really missed it. I miss interacting with everyone, I miss all of it. So I thought, well, I'm gonna start now. So I'm back and I think I'm in a very different place and I'm probably a little bit of a different person because I'm much more removed from my eating disorder and I feel like I can speak about it in a much more objective way and possibly that could be more helpful because I think I'm someone that's basically nearly through it. I'm not gonna lie, I still have relapse thoughts. I literally had one yesterday for like five minutes and it was awful. But then after I got through that, I felt really good. You win some, you lose some, swings and roundabouts, all of that. So I thought I would start by doing kind of update and Q&A video before I go back to the normal running of things around here. I have my cup of tea, so if you're watching this, it might be a long video, who knows? I don't really know yet because I don't actually script my videos. I feel like maybe I should. So go grab a snack, a drink, whatever you fancy, and sit down. And I'm so glad to be back. And I feel so strange in front of the camera because I've just not been in front of the camera for the longest time. I don't really know how to talk and I think I'm talking really fast so I apologise. I'm so nervous. Um, I'm now at university. I'm studying cancer biology and immunology as probably, very fingers crossed hopefully right now, an integrated masters um, at Bristol University. I'm very very happy. I've really enjoyed my course done well, hopefully in grades, touch wood, my exams come out well. I've got really good friends on my course, really good friends outside of my course. I've managed to spend the whole year at university kind of pretty much eating normally the whole time, which is a massive win because I was really scared that my eating disorder would flare up when I got to uni. And there have been moments, there have been struggles, but I would not say that there have been a full blown relapse since I've, since I've been at uni, which is lovely. The biggest change, is probably that I'm now in a relationship and that's really strange and it's really lovely um, and I'm very grateful and very lucky that's what I'm gonna say about that I don't know how much of it I want to share that's kind of my biggest update uh, food wise I've had a few questions on TikTok and Instagram every now and then about whether I was vegan or veggie I am currently veggie I tried going vegan didn't really work for me um, so I'm veggie Vegan did not work with my recovery, it wasn't good. I started restricting. I don't recommend it if you're doing it for the wrong reasons. And I think maybe subconsciously I was. I like oat milk though, so I'd rather have oat milk, but I'm not gonna cry if I have to drink some cow's milk. So I thought now we could move on to some questions. I asked on Instagram this morning, and I've also got old ones where I said I would film, but I, I just never filmed. Okay, so the first one is, how am I doing? I am doing actually really well. Oh. I completely forgot to mention this. Oh, I'll put this into the how I'm doing section. I'm doing really well. I guess I just updated just before this. Um, I'm actually going to be running a half marathon in Bristol in September and I've decided to run it for Beat. I will get the Just Giving page sorted and put it like all the links and everything below and get all of that sorted. But I will be fundraising for Beat because they really helped me out actually at the start of university because GPs waiting lists are too long that's all I'm going to say about the UK system it, they can't help me um, because I've not been in the system in the UK already and that's not good enough for me BEAT really really helped BEAT is a life saving charity when it comes to eating disorders here in the UK because they're becoming a massive problem and I don't really feel like the government's putting enough energy or funding into it and BEAT is the only place that some people can turn to and so yeah we love beat i'm gonna be running a half marathon so i've been doing a little bit of training i did some interval training yesterday and i hated it <laughs> i was so tired <laughs> um, i skipped the last five minutes of the run i was like i'm not doing this anymore i don't love a sprint i like a nice chilled long distance i don't love a sprint but i wanted to get my pace higher because i'm desperate to beat my mum and her time in a half marathon because uh, i'm a bit of a slow coach actually so <laughs> you want to have asked my lovely friend has asked am I coming back to France during summer break I wish I was going back more but I just I'm so busy <laughs> which is great to be able to say as well 
um, and it's expensive at the moment for me to travel to France because it's summer. But I will be coming back to France at the, like in August, um, which is really exciting. Um, my summer looks really cool. I'm going to be going to America. I'm going to be going to America on a big family holiday that's been planned since before Covid. I'm really excited for that, but I will be coming back to France at the end of August for a while because I am so desperate to see my dog and my dad. Someone else has asked, um, boyfriend, dot dot dot, yes, boyfriend, yes, there is a boyfriend, obviously, right now, blah, blah, blah. and then to go with that, there is quite a good question, I thought, I have a bit of experience with this now, how do you manage a relationship in recovery? It's a tough one, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that it is the easiest thing on earth, especially when there is a flare-up of the eating disorder, I do change. I turn into a different person and it's like, she's not a nice girl. She's not nice. I think it's a bit tough sometimes. Um, I think that's when the relationship goes under strain, is when I'm struggling. But I have found that the relationship is a massive motivator to get out of that kind of mindset and stop relapses. And that's been really great because there's something in my life that is way more important than losing weight, than controlling what I look like or controlling what I eat and actually been really helpful and really healthy for me in that sense. However, I have to be highly aware that it's a stressful situation, especially if you're with someone and you spend a lot of time with them. If you do struggle at any point, it puts a lot of pressure on them to help you and I wish it wasn't so full of pressure. I wish it didn't put so much strain on the relationship sometimes, but it is manageable and it's not all the time. And it's actually really nice to have someone there who notices when you're putting loads of effort in. So for me, one of the big things this academic year was eating with a big spoon, finally. Not eating with a teaspoon all the time. My boyfriend just noticed that very recently, that like I'd managed to do it. And that was really lovely. So I think having someone there that's really supportive and like very happy when you're doing well is a really good motivator. <laughs> So I couldn't say thank you more for that really. Um, but managing the relationship, you have to be highly aware that your eating disorder won't just affect you. It's really gonna affect whoever you're with as well. Which is why I think I could never be properly in a relationship before I got to a point in recovery where I could let go of the eating disorder because it would just, <laughs> it would cause so many arguments and so much stress and so much fear and everything, and, like terrible emotions and it wouldn't be healthy. So I think to have a relationship in recovery, you have to be at a point where you actually want to recover. I think also being open and honest about the eating disorder before you get into a relationship is a massive thing, which I did do. I think it wouldn't have been possible if we'd been in a re if I'd been in a relationship with someone for four months. Suddenly the eating distor disorder flares up, and they're like, "Why didn't you tell me about this before? This is quite a big thing. Why did you not mention it?" So I think being honest about it is probably very important. Honesty in a relationship is important anyway. So let's be honest, just be honest and be open when you're struggling as well um, and let them help you. What was your favourite hobby as a kid? When I was three, it was collecting bugs. And then as I got older, I guess I really enjoyed like rainbows, brownies, guides or reading or... I really liked playing shops with my mum and I'll always remember it. I used to have like a little shop set. It's like a little cashier desk thing that had fake money in. Um, and I would put up all these items of fake food, like little boxes and things up in my room on all the shelves. And then I get her to come in and do her shopping. What does she need? Does she need some stock cubes, maybe? Some milk, who knows? And then she'd put it in the basket. I'd tot up the price and then make her pay. And I used to really enjoy that. <laughs> I loved a good Tesco's trip with my dad. It used to make me go for a nap afterwards, and that really annoyed me. But um, when I was a kid kid, those were my favourite hobbies. Someone has put, what's your favourite aspect about university life? My favourite aspect is probably the academia. The people are amazing, but I've had like good people in my life before. The people are amazing, and that's an amazing aspect. And I love the clubbing, and I love the going out, I love going to the pub, I love a good, good drink, I like getting a bit drunk. I think my favourite bit is the academia. I think I feel so accomplished when I've been in the lab, the whole experiment's gone really well, I've got everything right, I feel like I've learned something new, that is my favourite part. The like euphoria I get from that is, 
I love it when I get to like move some bacteria around a bit in a petri dish. Someone has put any tips for feeling again and then someone else has put um what do you do when like emotions feel really overwhelming? You refuel your body, you've you're starting eating again and you feel all your emotions on a hundred percent, hundred and ten percent. So when you're not eating and you're not fueling your body enough, your emotions are I'd say like on a thirty percent. I didn't cry really, I didn't get that upset. Um, I only ever got upset about food. That's the only time I'd have any emotion. Uh, I never laughed, I wasn't happy, wasn't sad either. I was just like gray and this horrible like 30% emotion range where I didn't feel anything. I never started eating again and the emotions came back at 110% capacity. Like suddenly you're kind of really overwhelmed and it's all on top of you and you've got no idea how to deal with any of it you love it it's so lovely when you feel happy but feeling sad is another level of sad i've never felt that level of sad before or stressed or scared i'm gonna be very english about this and say sit down breathe make a cup of tea drink your cup of tea in the quiet and like I found maybe like breathing exercises really helpful or watching a comfort TV show or a comfort movie like Howl's Moving Castle just fixes everything. My favourite film is about time so I try not to watch it too much because otherwise I'm going to overdo it. That film really helped me um, just kind of take myself out of myself, let the emotions settle and then I can go back in, process them properly, accept that you're going to feel the emotions and accept that you're going to feel overwhelmed and find a plan and work your way through it as calmly as you possibly can. I've realised I'm a very emotional person and sometimes that gets me into a bit of trouble, sometimes it makes me very sad and sometimes it makes me the happiest person in the room because I guess in all those years that I was unwell I didn't really practice managing emotions because I didn't have any so I'm trying to do that now. That's my main goal is to like at the moment is to not get so panicked, not get so anxious and not get so sad, but keep the happiness levels high. Someone's put, do you miss your sick body? Sometimes when I have relapse thoughts, um, I do. And I think that's quite normal. Um, or if I see pictures of myself and I'm not in a good mindset. When I see pictures of myself now and then I see a picture of myself from a while ago, I do miss it sometimes, I'm not gonna lie. And I'm working on that and I'm working on accepting the way I look now and the way I feel now, that's okay. Uh, I don't really have much advice, but it's very normal, and so if you're feeling that, you're not alone. Did your ED damage your friendships or relationships? How did you make new friendships? It did. Um, I think I was very, very lucky at school in that my friends were really supportive, and so they kind of, it didn't damage those relationships too much, those friendships too much. Um, then they were easy to repair when I did start recovery. I think people could hopefully see that I didn't want to live with an eating disorder. In terms of uni, I kept it really quiet for a while, especially with the group of friends I'm with now, because my friend group has changed. With the friend group I'm with now, I've kept it really quiet. People have started to find out because like friends or relatives <laughs> of my friends at uni watch my TikTok, which is really weird. So it's starting to come out a bit more now, and when I struggled, it came out a little bit. It's a bit like, Ooh, what is this? Um, but I kept it really quiet apart from with my boyfriend who has known for a long time um, because honesty is the best policy. Policy. I think part of recovery is becoming an honest person with people that you trust and that's really nice actually. I made new friends just by pretending I didn't have an eating disorder and not letting it get in the way. That was very important for me. It was very important for me that before I got to uni I could handle going out for a meal, I could handle going to the pub, I could handle having a drink, I could handle all these social situations where food and calories are involved. I think if I hadn't done that I would have struggled to make friends because food is a massive part of human social interaction and if you can't, if you're not at a place in recovery where you can deal with that then you're going to struggle more than I struggled and I think it's very important that before you enter a new stage in your life where you have to meet people and you have to become friends with people um, you need to really work on yourself and be honest with yourself at how far you can push yourself because you also don't want to have a breakdown in front of new people and I completely get that and I worked really hard to get to a point where I didn't and no one kind of knew about it and that's absolutely fine and then slowly when you find the people you trust 
we can open up a bit more about that kind of thing. It doesn't damage relationships. I think the only time recently that it's damaged anything or threatened to damage anything has been in my relationship relationship when it's just caused a lot of strain because it's scary for both people. I think it threatened to damage and that scared me out of relapsing and now I'm actually quite good. What did your extreme hunger look like? Um, I had two bouts of extreme hunger. I had one when I tried to recover back in 2020 and that just looked like me eating every 20 minutes honestly. I was so hungry and it was the first time I'd ever kind of like started to repair my body since I'd been ill. That's what my extreme hunger looked like then. And it could be anything from fruit to chocolate. It could be, I really wanted a salad or I really wanted like a massive bowl of carbonara pasta. It could be anything. I ate loads of oats and it was scary because I didn't have the motivation to move either. I was so tired that like recovery really was eat, 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 rest, 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 eat, 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 rest, rest, rest. And that is completely normal and the right thing to do. You cannot recover without doing that at some point in your recovery and accepting that you shouldn't be running around and you shouldn't be moving and you shouldn't be exercising right in the early stages of recovery. I think it's detrimental. It doesn't matter what weight you are. If you're compensating through movement, it's not gonna work. You need to just eat. And the extreme hunger, try and remember that it's not extreme. It's just that you've restricted for so long. Even if it's been two days, you've restricted for two days. You've not had enough food two days of course you're gonna have to make some make some of it up i had that for about four months i'd say in 2020 and then in 2021 uh april 2021 is when i started the recovery that i'm in now because i relapsed when i got back to school um after 2020 my school meals wouldn't fill me up i would literally take everything that i could from the canteen and eat it um and i had snacks with me as well and it was I was eating more than everyone around me and I didn't like that feeling. I would say it was a longer process just because I did have to move around because I was at school and I had to go from classroom to classroom and sometimes that was a long walk. Um, and I think that lasted maybe a bit longer, maybe like five months. And then I got to about six months and it kind of disappeared a bit and I feel like I'm okay now. But I do notice that every time I have a struggle or I restrict just for one day, the next day I'm gonna be really hungry and I'm gonna to have to eat more whether I like it or not. Moral of the story is don't restrict your food. So, uh, I hope this video was kind of helpful. I hope it was good, I don't know. Uh, but if you did enjoy this video, please remember to like and subscribe. I am back. Um, I really hope you enjoyed it. I plan on uploading a lot more this summer and hopefully into the next academic year of university maybe there'll be some uni vlogs we might get some study out good vibe um but i really hope that you have a great day and i'll see you all soon